I'm Sosi Lepedian, and um, as part of the Center for Armenian Studies, Armenian Studies Community Chats, I'm here with Arakel Minasian to talk about his experience um, as part of the Center for Armenian Studies. Um, so Arakel just finished his master's in the Russian, East European, and Eurasian Studies program, um, and um, is working on his thesis. So we'll get to know a little bit about how that experience has been. Um, first, could you, Arakel, tell me a little bit about how you came to Michigan, why you, why you began this program, um, and what your interests were that brought you here? Yeah, uh, thanks, Sosie. Um, so I, I came to Michigan because I wanted to get um, kind of like a much more specialized education in in like Armenia, our like Armenian culture, and um, especially post-Soviet um, studies, the post-Soviet context. Um, in my undergrad, I had done a lot of, um, a lot of my classes had been in uh, political science and literature. And so the more I was doing those, um, those things during my undergrad, I was, I was just kind of interested in gaining more specialization within uh, the region and the country. Um, I mean, for a few reasons, like my Armenian background, uh, of course, made me interested in how these things are uh, for my culture and um, and for Armenia. Um, and yeah, I wasn't ready to really do a PhD or anything, so I, th I thought this would be a good stepping stone to to get more um, to get more experience in the region. Great, but um, so I understand your interests changed along the way. Um, through your experience in the program. What are you working on now for your thesis and how did you arrive at your current interests? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, so when I came in, I didn't really know uh, what I was gonna write about or study, um, but I, so basically I had traveled to Armenia um, the summer before I came into the program and I, I was there volunteering with the Birthright Armenia program. Um, and it turned out that my, uh, my Armenian teacher there, my Eastern Armenian teacher, uh, was, is <laughs> a contemporary writer. And so she introduced me to her writer, writer friends and to contemporary books. And that really got me interested in, um, in contemporary literature in Armenia um, and how it kind of engages with, because I was already interested in uh, political science, how especially the literature engages with uh, political themes in Armenia. Um, and so what I'm writing my thesis on right now is actually um, how contemporary authors in Armenia, um, how they relate to motifs of national identity, but also uh, nationalism um, mm -hmm. and how these authors, uh, what I argue is that they are generally more critical of nationalism and um, and are and look at national motifs with a bit more nuance, not necessarily disregarding them or saying they're um, they're not important, but looking at them with a bit more nuance uh, than writers uh, kind of towards the end of the Soviet Union when Armenia became an independent state. Um, so more with more nuance than those writers did. Mm -hmm. um, and so is this the, you had the chance to participate in one of the Armenian, the Center for Armenian Studies um, mm -hmm. conferences recently. Um, and it sounds like what you were presenting there was um, kind of a, a subset of what you're working on for your mm. thesis. Is that right? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so that, that particular piece um, hasn't made its way into my thesis, but a lot of the themes are really mm -hmm. similar. So the, that, conference was on um, Afterlives of Catastrophe. Uh, it was organized by Garin Jalatian and Anush Suni, uh, our postdocs. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so basically it was about, you know, different ways of looking at uh, the Armenian genocide, the catastrophe. Um, and so the piece that I looked at in my essay was a piece of travel fiction, um, or, well, nonfiction technically, because it's about the author, uh, the author's experience, Anna Davitian, in traveling to Diyarbakir, uh, which, of course, was a, a city uh, where Armenians formed up a sizable portion of the population uh, before the Armenian genocide, um, and is now populated by Turks and Kurds, of course. Um, and she sort of engages with that place a bit differently than 
um, than I think we've come to expect from um, from Armenian relationships with the idea of, of Western Armenia and the the places that uh, where Armenians lived before the genocide. And she looks at it a bit more uh, critically. So when she goes, you know, again, she doesn't necessarily disregard the places past as Armenian, but she uh, recognizes in her story how those, how that story coexists alongside, for example, the story of the Kurds who live there now uh, and their ongoing oppression um, under, the, under the Turkish regime. Um, as well as gender roles of, of Kurds who live there, um, how, how women uh, react to the place and to the society uh, that they live in. So, so she looks at it um, in a not only Armenian sense, but from a very kind of uh, nuanced and wide-ranging um, um, viewpoint. So that, that was what I talked about uh, at that conference. And how was that experience of being able to present in the conference as part of the Center for Armenian Studies? Um, mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Um, it was really great for me um, for a few reasons. I, I mean, first of all, it was my first conference. Um, well, it was technically a workshop, but very much felt like a conference. Mm -hmm. um, so that was very interesting for me to just, to just go and, and, um, and present what I had been working on for a while. It also felt like a, a really big culmination of a lot of the things that I was doing. So it was, it was important for me in that sense that, you know, this paper that I had worked on in a previous class the, the previous year, um, how, I mean, it was constantly evolving and changing um, as I was looking at different themes and different ways of looking at it. And so just in my last year to be able to, to kind of bring that, um, that, particular piece that I had studied to the Armenian studies community at U of M and I mean beyond U of M too because we had people there uh, from different universities. Uh, that was really that was really important and meaningful and actually um, gave me a lot of really good ideas for the paper itself. Um, so so that was really interesting in that way. That's awesome. Um, and so I mean you've been a part of this community for I guess two years now. Um, how has that community that you've cultivated through the Center for Armenian Studies um, been part of your experience at Michigan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, it's been extremely important for me. Um, I think actually one of the things that really drew me to uh, Michigan was the kind of sense of community I got from the Armenian study, from the uh, Center for Armenian Studies. Um, when I came for my visit day, I remember, um, Professor Ron Suni had organized a dinner with uh, me and another uh, student, um, and and I also got the chance to meet with uh, Naira Tumanyan, who is our who is our program specialist, and um, and Professor Hakim Al Rustum. Um, so that just meeting them and you know like seeing how I could engage in Armenian studies with these people was really was really um, a big drawing point for me and I mean when I came it it was um, pretty much exactly <laughs> what I expected and, and what I had hoped for um, just I mean among the postdocs uh, who of course change every year which was you know really nice like I got a chance to meet different people um, each year who worked on different things and to exchange ideas uh, you know both formally and informally in conference settings but also just getting coffee and um, getting beers or anything like that. And um, I mean, really, like my closest friends have been in the within the Center for Armenian Studies. So, so I'll really miss them and the, and the community that we had here, both intellectual community and social community. Yeah, it sounds like you'll definitely remain part of that community, though, <laughs> even when you're not at Michigan. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> um, I think we have time. I'm not sure the timing, but I think we have time for a couple more things. Um, mm -hmm. I guess this I'm wondering, I know that part of your studies included travel that was supported mm -hmm. by the program. Yes. Um, so I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about that. And it also um, kind of when you were talking about the paper that you presented at the workshop, mm -hmm. um, I kind of wondered if, if any of your experiences um, paralleled or kind of, mm -hmm. um, I guess, I don't know, made you connect in particular to that piece that you were talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I did, I did receive um, 
this past summer, summer 2019, uh, a travel grant from uh, the Center for Armenian Studies uh, to, to travel to uh, Armenia, uh, Istanbul, and Beirut. And um, as part of my MA thesis research in there, I was, I was interacting with contemporary writers, talking to them about their, what they're working on, uh, going to book presentations, um, not so much in Istanbul and Beirut, where the literary scene, you know, of course, because they're smaller communities, uh, one of them devastated by genocide. Um, I mean, both technically devastated by genocide. Um, um, so those, so those two cities, not so much of the kind of like active everyday talking to writers, but um, but I went to all three cities to get a sense of what Armenian literature today is like uh, and literary production is like in those cities. Um, and so that was really important for my, for my, the development of my thoughts. I mean, even just to, just coming across new books or meeting new writers who I hadn't uh, heard about before, one of whom is actually in my thesis now. Um, so that was, that was extremely important. Um, the, on the topic of the Davidian paper, um, traveling about, you know, her traveling to Turkey and whether there are any parallels, um, not so much this time around, but bef the first time I went to Armenia, um, definitely I, I sort of, well, I, I didn't really know, I guess, how to relate to Armenia, which is, I mean, a country that is uh, Armenian and I'm Armenian, but, you know, also has a, has a different history having been part of the Soviet Union, um, my family having come from, uh, Beirut, um, and uh, before that, the Ottoman Empire. Um, so I didn't really know how to relate to it. Um, I think, yeah, something that was really interesting for me was to see, I think, how diverse, when I was there, how diverse the Armenian experience is, that there is my experience, that there are, there's the experience of, you know, people who grew up in the Soviet Union, um, we're all Armenian, but we just have slightly different experiences. So it's, it's extremely nuanced. So that got me questioning, you know, this idea of like a single monolithic Armenian um, identity. Um, and so I think that's really why that particular piece spoke to me because, um, because when this author, Anna Davitian, went to Diyarbakir, she, mm -hmm. she had an extremely um, kind of, nebulous, um, nuanced experience with the place that wasn't monolithic or, um, or necessarily the same as someone else might have had, but rather was different based on different criteria, you know, gender or, um, or you know, looking at the experience of the Kurds and, and things like that. Yeah, that's really interesting. I would love to read your thesis when you're done with it. <laughs> um, so, so what now? I guess you're working on your thesis still. Um, yeah. Then what's what's next? Um, so a, f a few things. Uh, I think um, I haven't I haven't made up my mind on a on exactly what path to take, but there are certain things that I've been working on and that I want to continue. So while I was here at Michigan, I really became interested in translation uh, from Armenian into English. Uh, mostly, you know, mostly at, at first it was about just understanding the texts, um, especially the contemporary Armenian texts, which, um, you know, use a different dialect than I'm familiar with and use a lot of Russian words. So at first it was really just deciphering what they're saying, but then I, I realized uh, that I, I, I had a real affinity uh, for it. Um, I, my undergrad, uh, I was telling you, was in, was in literature and political science and part of the literature part of that was creative writing and actually my my undergraduate thesis was a novella um so so it really translation kind of became for me this bridge between you know studying literature and writing at the same time taking the armenian text and rewriting it in english um and so and so i've so i definitely want to continue that and i'm, I'm working on some projects now that i have a few projects lined up um uh, of course, those are kind of freelance for the time being. Um, beyond that, solid plans I don't have yet, um, but I'm I'm hoping to figure it out soon as I work on these things and and wrap up my wrap up my masters, of course. Yeah, that sounds really cool. 
Um, I think we're <laughs> about out of time. So it was really nice talking okay. to you um, and learning so much about yeah, likewise. your experience. Thank you so much for your questions. Yeah, of course. Um, and I guess thank you to the people watching um, for, you know, tuning in to these community chats. Um, and um, thank you. I Just as a last word, maybe thank you so much from my end to the Center for Armenian Studies um, uh, for everything. And I'm excited to see what my relationship with the center will be moving forward. <laughs>